this is Rosa Kelly. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am here with a super fun and easy interactive gateful mini album and I'm super excited that I am going to be using my very own paper collection. This is the Paris collection that I recently released and I'm just in love with it. It has my favorite colors which are pink and black of course and it has a very positive message and I think that we can all take a little bit of self-love every day so it also has a page of affirmations and I'm gonna be sharing with you that one by one but first I want to say that all the money that I am making uh, from my paper collection is going to be donated for um, this social work that my brother is doing in Peru sending uh, delivering personally food to the people that most needed i did share a video with you guys probably a couple weeks ago he's still doing that and i'm very proud of him and i'm just trying to help as much as i can with that so all the money that i'm making from this digital collection will be donated to that cause so now i'm gonna share with you the pages one by one this is the ephemera page and it says follow your dreams life is tough but so are you let life surprise you every moment is a fresh beginning and this over here says beautiful brilliant and brave as we all are and over here this is a quote from i think it's a winnie pooh book it says you are braver than you believe stronger than you seem smarter than you think and love more than you'll ever know and i really really love this quote i think it's such a beautiful quote for anyone really and now let me give you a little walkthrough of the pages i printed this out um at seven and three quarters by seven and no i'm sorry seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter which is 7.25 in your computer and i did it like that because um the book that i'm gonna make it's gonna be eight by eight so the pages are going to be um seven and a half by seven and a half so this has to be a little bit smaller over here we have this beautiful girl leaning on the eiffel tower i thought it was so chic so beautiful you guys know i am obsessed with everything that is paris <laughs> and i hope one day i'll get to go and over here we have some eiffel towers and little poodle which is so french so cute this is the same page on pink this over here says beautiful you i try to include a lot of messages and i think it's important for us to appreciate ourselves and celebrate ourselves too we're always creating projects for everybody else i think <laughs> i'm always doing things for my girls my nephews i don't know like different things so i think this is going to be something that is going to be very personal to me and actually put pictures of myself which i never do in my books uh, but it's, it's fun to look back and see you know how we grown how we progress in our lives ourselves so it's something to celebrate this over here says um paris love dream be you be free and it's just such a fun little page i love that one and this one says she said she could so she did and i think this is such an important page to celebrate a milestone on your on your life so for this one maybe in my case i'll probably put in there um, my graduation picture from when i graduated um university it was a really big achievement for me and I, lo I love to celebrate that and show that to my kids as well this is another poodle page and over here we have the black and white page that you know i'm obsessed with black and white and some pink and beautiful girls in there and polka dots and this one says i can do anything with the right shoes if you know me personally you know i'm obsessed with shoes before i had any injury i actually wore heels probably every day and i wanted to include a page of affirmations now you don't have to include this in your book. You can even use this for your journal. Every day on my planner, I write a quote, um, and I do usually once a week, I do my quotes, and I really love to look at that. So I think it will be really fun to have that something, something like that on your mini album. You can print this and put it in your planner. It will be super fun. So these are all affirmations, uh, just to you know embrace your life it says i can do anything i put my mind to 
a great strength lies, lies within me all the time. And then it says, today I face everything with great courage. I have the courage to keep going. I always choose happiness and I just really love it. And this one says, I am in the process of becoming the best version of myself. And you know, I think it's really cute. And then also I wanted to include some journaling pages. I do like to include journals, journaling areas on my albums, as you know, and it's really hard to find journaling spaces. You know, it's usually you just write on a piece of paper and just put it in there on some cardstock. So I wanted to create something special also to help you embrace yourself. So this says something wonderful is about to happen. So, you know, just talk about positive things. My qualities are endless. And then you can talk about your qualities. So why not, right? <laughs> and over here it says, I am most grateful for, so you have some journaling space in there and then here is i am strong because and we can probably write down something that we've overcome that makes us stronger and just celebrate our life so that is my collection i'm super excited i just printed one of each for now but i'll probably be printing more as we go because we're probably gonna need uh, more than those pages but now let's take a look at what we're gonna need to make the album I'm gonna use some chipboard for my cover. So I have one piece of eight by eight, one piece of, oh, two pieces of eight by four. And also I have two pieces of eight by three and a half. And I am gonna have everything on a PDF write up as well. And those are gonna be also available on my website. So I'm gonna have that ready by the time I publish this video, hopefully. Then we're going to need some lightweight cardstock. Uh, for the lightweight, I'm probably going to need four or five pages. And these are going to be for your binding and for your hinges only. That's the only reason that I use the, the lightweight. And maybe if you want to do some tags, you can always do lightweight as well. But for the main pages and for all the flaps and um, openings and things like that, I'm going to be using heavyweight, which is 110 this is a lot stronger cardstock for my pages i like my pages to be very strong and sturdy so i don't know exactly how many we'll be using but i just have a pack here this is actually a quarter of the pack you get a hundred sheets on one pack or 50 sheets or something like that so one pack will be plenty in even most <laughs> than sufficient so let's go ahead and get started so we're gonna start with the lightweight cardstock we are gonna join three pieces together so we can wrap our book let me grab my little tool so i'm just gonna take this out and i'm gonna do the tape on both i'm using a quarter inch tape for this step but you can use glue or you can use your larger tape as well so i'm just gonna peel off these to the side whoops and then we are gonna join these two pieces together just like that and then i'm going to join these other pieces so well so i'm going to take this out and just line this up and there you go okay so then we're going to place our chipboard pieces we're going to start with the eight inch piece first and then we're going to do the two smaller ones, the three and a half piece on the sides. And then we're going to do the four inches. Oops, I move this more to this side, just like that. So that's how we're gonna place this. We have the eight inches, the two three and a half pieces, and the two uh, four inch pieces there. So I'm going to add some double-sided tape. Okay, so I have tape on all my pages and I'm actually going to add another half page here because I don't think I have enough room, enough wiggle room to wrap my album. So I'm going to connect this as well, just using the smaller tape. Go ahead and press this down. And there you go. And I think that way we just have a little bit more room to play with. And there you go. So I'm just gonna join those together. And okay, so now we're gonna start. See, now we have plenty of room. 
and I also don't like when my connector pieces lies right in between the connector pieces of the cardstock. You don't want that because that could open up. Okay, so there you go. So now we have it like this and I'm just gonna peel off the tape. Okay, and then we're going to just glue this down right here. There you go. And then we're going to do the sides. So remember, we're doing the three and a half inch piece first. And we're just gonna place that right next to it, but we're gonna leave a little space in between these two pages. Also, if you need a guidance, which I probably do need, place a little ruler on the bottom of your chipboard, that way you know this one is on the same exact line right there. Sometimes it's hard to see when they are, they are so long. So I'm just gonna do the same here and I'm going to peel off the tape of this four inch right here like so. And there you go. So now I'm just gonna again leave a little space in between and place that down. And then we're gonna do the same for the other side as well. So now I'm just going to take out some of this extra on one of the sides. I only want about an inch around the chipboard. And then I'm going to cut the corners out. And I've shown you before this tool that I have that makes that part really easy to do. So you just place this right here. And, oops, I have to move around it because this looks so big and then you just cut right there and that gives you the perfect spacing in between your chipboard and your cut and then we are going to bend the cardstock first i just start by gently massaging and slowly bending the cardstock so you don't you don't want this to crack and then you're gonna press down on it there you go and then i'm going to use my tape and glue that down so and place one right there and maybe one closer to the bottom and there you go and then we're just going to peel those out long pieces <laughs> and now you're just gonna press down here like that okay and there you go so now we have one side and let's do the same for the other side so now we're gonna do the same for the side I'm just gonna massage the paper a little bit and then we're gonna bend it now on this one you do want to make sure you tuck in your corners and they're not sticking out and then we're gonna press down like that and again I'm gonna add some tape and here and there you go and then we're just gonna peel this off and there you go now we're just gonna go put this down and let's do the same on the other side so now that we have everything wrapped up, we are going to use a ruler and a bone folder or score tool. And we're just going to score here on the bending lines. And we're gonna help our pieces bend like that. So I'm just going to do every one of these bending points, just like that, same thing on this other side here and make sure you're not pressing too hard you don't want to break your cardstock okay so now we're gonna do the same right here like that and there you go so now you have the base the binding base for your book 
and I just love how chunky this is going to be. So then I'm going to use a piece of seven and a half by five and a half, and we are going to glue this piece on the right spine, the right side. And so we are going to do, I'm actually going to do some double-sided tape on the sides of the spine because this is the area where usually it will bubble up. So I'm just gonna do two right there and two right here. So make sure you don't put the tape on top of the bending line, okay? So we're going to take those out and then we're going to also add some glue on this page here. Okay, and we're just gonna place this down right there. There you go. And I'm also going to press down really good. Make sure that there's no air bubbles or anything here on this side. Okay, so now we're going to score again on these bending lines, just like this. I'm gonna do one and two. And there you go. And I hold the ruler down always because I am preventing that way for these to bubble up or come up. And there you go. So now we have this section done. Now on the other side, we are going to be adding the hinge. So let's go ahead and work on the hinge. So now for the hinge, we're gonna use a piece of seven and a half by 11 inches. We're going to start scoring at one and a half. And then we're going to score every three quarter inches. So we're going to score at two and a quarter, three inches, three and three quarters, four and a half, and five and a quarter. Then we're going to do six inches, six and three quarters, seven and a half. So now we have one, two, three, and then we're gonna do eight and a quarter, nine inches, and nine and three quarters going to join the first two three quarter inches together and we're gonna pinch this and make this little heel whoops there you go you can see that little heel and that is going to be your first hinge so we're going to press down on this okay make sure that you fold it to both sides and press down to really break that cardstock um, and make it more flexible and then we're going to skip the next one and press the next two together. So that's how we're gonna continue making a hinge. Fold the both sides and press down. Skip the next one and join the other two. And again, press down on both sides. Okay. And then we're gonna do the last one here and press down on both sides. So now we have this little piece with the little heels. So now we're gonna turn this to the back and we're going to add some double-sided tape. Now for this one, I'm using the 3 8 of an inch or you can also use the half an inch if you have that one. And I'm just gonna place on one of the sides of each one of the hinges. So I'm gonna take that out, join together, then add the next one here, the tape right there. Then take this one out, join together. Okay, and then the next hinge and same thing, put a double-sided tape, take it 
take off this tape right there and join those together and then we're gonna do this one more time for the last hinge so let's take that out and join this together okay so then when you turn this to the other side you're gonna see your hinges all ready and we're gonna add the double-sided tape so you want to add your double-sided tape closest to the outside edge of the hinges and you're gonna do that for both sides so i'm just gonna finish up with all the hinges so now we're gonna add the hinge onto our base and i'm going to do the same thing here i'm going to add my double-sided tape on both sides next to the hinge just to avoid that bubble um, the paper from wrinkling and bubbling up and i only do this on gatefold albums i don't do it on uh, normal albums i feel like the gatefolds tend to bubble up a little bit at least in my experience they have but you can definitely use this technique for um, any type of binding as well so now i'm just going to add glue on the hinges i'm going to add glue all around and i'm actually going to add quite a lot of glue on each one of these hinges to make sure that it's really secure and just like this and then we also want to do the edges and the top and the bottom and there you go so now we're going to center this on the spine make sure that your hinges are on the center and then we're going to place this down like this i'm going to press down on each one and then on the sides so we're gonna again make sure that there's no air bubbles i'm going to use this one here and just try to glue this down really good on the sides as well and this side right there and then we are going to score on the bending lines again so we're gonna just gently press right there and same thing on this other bending line right there and you will fill the gap on the top and the bottom so you can line it up with and there you go so now we can go ahead and bend these two sides as well and there you go so now we have the hinges added and there's no air bubbles so i love love that now for this side here i'm going to just use one of my scrap pieces and just cover these two sides and i'm just gonna cut these at seven and a half and i'm also going to use a piece of seven and a half by seven and a half to cover the back of the base the way everything looks even and also this piece is going to secure your hinges here and here so that's why we add this other piece right on top right there okay so now we're done with the binding and we're ready to work on the pages so for the pages we are going to need four pieces of seven and a half by eight and a half so i'm just going to cut two at a time seven and a half and this already measures eight and a half so we just need to do one cut on those two same thing for this one i'm going to cut at seven and a half so now i have four and then we're also going to need four pieces of seven and a half by seven and a half so this one we're going to do two cuts so right here there's seven and a half 
and then I'm going to turn this over and cut at seven and a half and we need to do four of those as well so I'm going to do this one more time seven and a half by seven and a half so now we're going to score the larger pieces at half an inch on both sides along the eight and a half inch side so i'm going to score at half and at eight inches and we're gonna do the same for all four pieces half and eight inches i'm going to fold along the score lines just like that and we're going to add your double-sided tape in here. I am using the 3 eighths of an inch on these little flaps. So then I'm going to do the same for all of these four pieces. I'm going to fold along the lines and add our tape. So then to make the pages, we are going to remove one of the tapes on the side, just a little piece like that. And we are going to place the smaller piece right on top. Make sure that all three corners align right there. And then you can press down here on your sticky side and remove the tape. Then we're going to turn this to the other side. Hold this on the center. Don't let your page bubble up. And then we're going to remove the tape here, press down and take that out. And there you go. So now we have the first base page. We're going to do the same with the other three. So now we have the four base pages ready and we're going to work on each one at a time. And I thought that it will be a lot easier if we start doing our pre-cutting ahead. So that's what we're going to do. So the first size that you are going to need is seven and a half by seven and a half. I'm labeling my different sizes from A to F. There's gonna be six different sizes. So on the PDF, you'll see it all written down. But so for this first size, there's going to be five pieces. So we're gonna score half an inch along one of the sides and we're gonna do the same for the five pieces and then when we start building each one of the pages i'm going to refer to these ones as um, page size a or b or c so you can probably label this with a little post-it note or something to make it easier for you to remember which one is which so i'm going to put these ones right here those are going to be my a size now we're gonna move on to size B. So for this one, you're gonna need four pieces and these are seven and a half by four and a quarter. And I'm going to score at half an inch along four and a quarter. And we're gonna do the same for all four pieces. So the next one is going to be size C. This one is cut at eight and a half by four and a half. And on this one, we're going to score at half an inch at eight inches. And then we're going to turn around and score at half an inch along the four and a half inches. We are going to do the same to both of these pieces. So size D is going to be seven and a half by five and a half. And we are going to score along five and a half. And for this size, we are going to need four pieces. And this one is size F, which is eight and a half by five and a half. We are going to score at half an inch and eight inches along eight and a half. And for this one, we only need one piece. And the last one is size F, which are cut at five and a half by five and a half. These are gonna be six pieces. And for this one and this one only, I am using the lightweight cardstock. And that's because this is going to be a waterfall. And I don't like when my waterfalls are too bulky. So I prefer to do lightweight cardstock for my waterfalls. So we are going to score at half an inch on one of the sides. 
So now that we have all of our pieces cut and scored ahead of time, I think it's gonna be a lot easier to build the pages. So I'm gonna be doing some page combination using the different sizes that we cut. So what you wanna do now is fold along the score lines. You can either do this as you um, build the pages or you can do them all at once and then just have them all ready for you. You can uh, fold along the score line and add double-sided tape if you're using double-sided tape to attach your pages. I'm gonna be attaching my pages using glue. I think it's a lot faster and it works just the same. So for the page one, we are going to use two of the size A, which are the seven and a half by seven and a half. And we are going to add one on each side. Now make sure that you have your opening to, you know, on this direction. And then we're going to do one on the left, just like this. And we're going to do one on the right side. So I'm gonna add some glue. There you go. And line this up to the side. And there you go. So now we're going to turn these to the back and we are going to work on page number two. For page number two, I am going to use my size C. So I'm going to use one of these ones. And this is the one that measures eight and a quarter by four. I'm sorry, eight and a half by four and a half. I'm going to be making a pocket. So I'm going to take out the corners here to avoid the bulk. I'm going to fold and on the score lines and here we go one two and three and then i'm just going to add my glue my glue here and my glue here Oops. and now we're just going to line this up to the left side of the page and this is going to be a standing side pocket so I'm just gonna hold this down now and make sure that it's even and this is why I like using glue because you have a, a quick second to adjust before your glue dries up so I'm just gonna press this down and there you go so we are done with this page and now we're gonna move on to page number three so for page number three, I'm going to be using two of the size B cutouts, which is seven and a half by four and a quarter. And I'm going to fold along the score lines here again. And this is going to give me a gateful page. And I just love making these gateful pages here. So we're gonna glue one on each side again make sure that your openings are always on this direction and now we're going to add a little bit of glue here or you can use your tape and I'm going to line this up on each side and now I'm going to do the same on the other side and again, we're just gonna line this up here. And then always double check that your gatefold is closing and they're perfectly touching and adjust that a little bit. And there you go. Now just press down and press down. Make sure that your glue is set. And this is how that page is going to look. So now we're gonna work on page number four. For this one, we are going to be using letter D and we're gonna use all four of these ones. So let's go ahead and fold along the score lines. And we are going to add two on the left and two on the right. So I'm going to start with this one here. Add a little bit of glue. And then you're going to line this up on the left side you're gonna press down make sure the page is even and then we're going to add another one on top and i just like creating a lot of room for pictures so that's why 
I make most of my layouts pretty large and we're gonna place this second one right on top of the first one just like that and then we're going to do the same with the other two on the other side so I'm going to do one here and we're gonna glue this on the left side And I love this way of making albums because it just makes it so much easier. Everything is cut out for you. You kind of create a little system and you can maybe even make two or three at the same time and just play around with the layouts a little bit. So now I'm gonna add the second one right on top here on the other side. Okay, so I'm just gonna press down and then we're going to open this up and we're going to close one on each side and we're done with this page. So now let's move on to page number six. So for page number six, we're also going to use two of the size A, which are the larger ones. And these two are going to be placed one up and one down. So I'm going to fold along the score lines here and we're just gonna add some glue and we're going to place one on the top there you go just line it up and then we're going to do that other one on the bottom so again i'm gonna fold along the score lines i'm going to open this one up and we're gonna add this one here on the bottom just like this okay so we're gonna press down on it and there you go so we have kind of a similar page to the first one but this one will open up and down and then we're gonna move to the back of this page which is page six for page six we're also going to do a page size a and a size c so the size c is going to be the pocket on the bottom of the page and then we're going to do size a along the top so i'm just gonna fold along the score lines for these three and we're gonna glue this pocket. So let me just add some glue. Glue right here. And glue on this side. And we're gonna add this right there on the bottom of the page. There you go. I'm just gonna press down, make sure that the corners are dry and nothing coming out from the side. And then I'm going to use my size A. I'm gonna fold this along the score lines. And we are going to add some glue. And add this on the top. And there you go. So now we have a different spin on this page. This is gonna open up and have a pocket on the inside. So now we're gonna work on page number seven. For this page, we're gonna use both sizes E and F. So first I'm gonna start with my size E. We're gonna fold this along the score lines and this is going to be um, a gatefold, oh not a gatefold, sorry, a belly band for this page. So I'm just gonna add some glue here on the half an inch flaps. I'm going to start with the bottom. Again, make sure your orientation on your page is how you want it. And we're just gonna center this just like that. And then we're gonna add glue on the top piece. And we're going to fold this down and press down in there. 
And then we're going to build our waterfall on top of that. So I'm going to fold along the score lines for these pieces. And we're just gonna start placing them from the top to the bottom. So I'm gonna start with the first one. I'm gonna add some glue. And we're going to line this up at the top. There you go. And then I'm going to open this up and do the same with the next one. So I'm going to fold on the score line and so we're going to add some glue. And then we're going to add this page right with the first one ended with, with this half an inch here. So that's how you're going to line it up right there. Okay, so now we're going to press down. And we're going to open this up and add the next page here. So again, I'm going to add some glue and just line that up. And I like creating these belly bands because you are lining this up with the belly band on the side. So you know they're all going to look even. And also you are utilizing this space behind the waterfall as well. So I'm just gonna continue adding here the other pieces. And there you go, we have the waterfall here and we also have the belly band on this page. And now we're gonna work on page number eight, which is our last page. And we are going to be using the two size B pages that we have left. So I'm going to fold along the score lines and this one we're going to do one on the top and one on the bottom and I'm just going to add some glue and we're going to line this up here on the top and then we're going to line this up on the bottom. So there you go, now we have this page ready as well. And wasn't that super quick and easy? I think it's a lot easier when we do it this way. It's kind of like making a little puzzle and it's just so much fun. So now we're gonna add the pages. I have all my pages in order here. Now the order doesn't really matter. You can mix this up as much as you want. And if you're making multiple books, you can just make it a little bit different that way. When you add your pages, first you're gonna find the center and then we're going to peel off just a little bit of the tape here. So I'm gonna Put that to the side and then we're going to insert this page now when you insert your page only go as far as the tape don't go deeper into touching the spine because then your book is not going to open flat so i'm just going to insert this and we're going to center it okay and then we are just going to press down here on the sticky side and remove the rest of the tape, make sure that it's straight. And there you go. So now we're gonna turn this to the back and we're going to remove the tape on this side too. And then we're just gonna press down on that. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same for all the pages. So again, I'm gonna find my center right here. Oops, there you go. And then I'm going to insert this into the page into the hinge and then we're just gonna press down remove the tape and then I'm gonna turn that to the other side and take the tape on the back okay so we're just gonna take that out and there you go now we have all of our pages added into our book and the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add one more page here on the back. This was another size A cut at seven and a half by seven and a half. And I went ahead and score at half an inch. And we're just going to add this page on the left side like this. So we have a little bit more room for pictures or anything that you want to add. And I'm just gonna line this up here with the 
bending line make sure that you are not on your bending line you are just right next to that and there you go so we are done with the base of the book i'm going to come back on a second video to do the embellishing of the pages and yeah i hope that you guys enjoy this tutorial i hope that you had fun uh, probably learning something new and hopefully you enjoy this different way of making the album doing the pre-cut and just kind of playing around with the layout so like I said, I'm going to have written PDF instructions for this book available on my website. I'm going to have the link down below. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.